Hello everybody, I am Jarrett Ross, a genie vlogger, and welcome back to another Professional Genealogist Reacts. On today's video, I will be reacting to Don Lemon Travels in Search of His Roots from CNN. Now this video is from 2014, and I may have actually seen it already, but if I did, I really don't remember it. It was from probably a while back. Um, but I'm expecting, I think this is going to be similar to the Kamau Bell thing that I reacted to, as well as the um, uh, John Berman video that I reacted to. Basically, I think CNN did a whole bunch of videos with a lot of the different, you know, anchors and people who were on their network and did like a an, their own ancestry stuff with it. So I think that's part of this. So I'm pretty sure Don Lemon is going to do like, you know, like the other videos, he's going to travel around, go to the places where his ancestors were, do some of the genealogy research and then experience it for himself and a lot of the other videos Kamau Bell and John Berman involved their parents so I won't be surprised if Don Lemon's parents are somehow involved in the video as well uh, so I'm I'm hoping for a really good video I'm curious if they'll do any DNA stuff because doesn't really indicate anything any DNA stuff so it's probably going to be more like the John Berman video um, but before we do jump into this video, please be sure to give this a thumbs up. That really does help me out and be sure to subscribe and click that bell for notifications on future videos. But now with that said, let's jump into this video. Growing up in Port Allen, here it is. I grew up on Court Street, and on one side of Court Street, the black people lived. On the other side of Court Street, the white people lived. This is how I looked growing up as a kid, this little brown, curly-haired kid with big teeth and big ears. I lived through desegregation in the 1960s and experienced racism growing up in the South, but I know it was nothing compared to what my ancestors endured. I just never got to learn their histories. I don't know where this journey is going to take me. What am I doing? Am I, are you rolling? I couldn't do this without my mother, and I can't tell you how excited I am that she is going to be with me. Hi, mother. Hi. <laughs> I had no idea at all where my ancestors were from. I did have an idea that I did have uh, ancestors in Africa, but I never, ever thought about pursuing it. My mother, she had problems with people. She was shunned. Uh, because of her color and her father was white. Hmm. Michelle Erkenbrack from Ancestry.com has been researching my roots. One of the things that we found in Don's tree, his great grandparents were a white man and a black woman who worked at a place called Sinclair Plantation in Brulee, Louisiana. Sinclair Plantation, built in 1855 where my great-grandmother, Catherine Jackson, worked at the sugarcane mill, and where my great-grandfather, Harry Revo, was a plantation overseer or manager. We are walking along what is known as Manager's Row. So anyone that worked at the plantation had housing provided to them, and these are those houses. I remember the smells of burnt sugarcane in the hot summer air, but I didn't know I had a connection to this place. So who lived on this row? Harry. Wasn't there a story about Harry and Mary Henrietta? Well, it's a story my mom told me that her mother died in childbirth. And Harry Revo wanted to take her and raise her. But her grandparents chose not to do that. So they came and got her and raised her. And it makes you wonder how that could have changed and affected her life. It would have been the difference between having been raised in a white family or in a black family. Harry Raveau. This is him in 1910. Um, he's also living in West Baton Rouge. And Odile is his wife. And him and o Odile never had any children. Really? They never had children. He died at 56. Mm -hmm. The cause of death is right here. Gunshot wound of the head. Wow. His suicide was in the papers. 
Suicide. Shriva, who had been in ill health for several months, killed himself Saturday by placing a 12-gauge pump gun to his head and pulling the trigger. A coroner wow. story brought in a verdict of suicide. But why would he kill himself? What was going on in his life? Maybe not having a relationship with his child, and he never had children. And that was the only child, and she was black. I wish I had asked my grandmother what she knew about her father, or how much he tried to be a part of her life. Who so, bought the house? He did. For my mom. He bought it and gave it to her, mm -hmm. right? This is someone that he's he cares for and is trying to provide for in his own way, because you didn't know that he had done that. Right? No, no, I never knew that. My mom know. said she saved the money to buy it. Mm -hmm. And she never worked, so we wondered how she saved the money. Sure, she had her ways, right? She had her way. <laughs> ways. <laughs> <laughs> That's a family thing. <laughs> ways. <laughs> Turns out that my family has lived and labored in this area since before the Civil War. Our roots date back to when Louisiana first became part of America in 1803. Interesting. For the next part of your story, now is this through the Reveau line? To the West Baton Rouge Museum. This cabin was taken from the Allendale Plantation and was built by slaves. So we're we're in a building that was that's very contemporary to the time of when your ancestors lived here as well. I want to shift back over to. Catherine Woods, your third great grandmother. Hmm. And we don't know who her father was, but there's a candidate. His name was Clements Woods. Black male, 68. He was born in Louisiana, mm -hmm. and his father was born in Africa. Africa. So Clements represents that first generation that was born in the States, and his father represents one of the last generations to come directly from Africa. The next question is, where in Africa do you think he might have been from? <laughs> now, do they have that? With the, question. the question is, do they have that uh, question answered through the paper trail, or do they go to DNA? Who do I think I am? It's something only my ancestral DNA could show. So these DNA. Are the results. Seventy-six percent African. Now this video is from 2014, so these tests and the results have changed greatly since then. So I wonder what his results would be now. Um, but the way they're breaking it down, it looks like a very broad breakdown. And twenty-two percent European. And then you've got twenty-five percent. Nigeria and 22%. Okay, they still break it. 50% of your genetic makeup comes from that specific region in Africa. That's pretty cool. My ancestry is deeply rooted in what is now known as the Slave Coast. My mom and I traveled to Ghana's Cape Coast Castle, the main exit point for slaves coming to the United States. SO? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. This is my mother, Catherine. Hi, Mom. Hi, You're warmly welcome. So Why are we here? So we're going to take a tour. I'm going to take you back in time. This was a male slave dungeon. This was constructed in around 1792. They stayed here for about three months on the average. Well, in, in, in this darkness, yes. It felt like a Oof. descent into hell. I felt like this must be what it's like to enter hell. Three months in darkness. I believe that people walked down that path and then walked through here, and then spent months in here, if you survived. This was a dungeon for the troublemakers. Those were inciting rebellions and instigating violence. But it was dark in here. It was dark in here. Right. They were held here in chains. So you see the hole on the wall? The holes on the wall. They were held in chains. And this channel served as a drainage for their feces and urine. The floor on which you are standing now has been excavated. It's made up of feces, blood, decomposed bodies, clothes, food, vomit, sweats, and perhaps the tears of the occupants of the dungeon. 
I kept looking for places to escape, and there was no escape. The only escape was either become a slave, go to a new world, or you escape through death. What you are standing before now is a shrine. And behind this wall, there was a tunnel through which the captives were led to the exits. Is that where the ships were? Yes, to get on the, yeah, get on the boats and into the ships. Now, the walls are dedicated to the souls of our ancestors. I don't know how many thousands or millions of people ended up in places like this. I've actually requested for a candle for you to light in memory of ancestors who passed through this facility. That one little candle was a fire of inspiration. Of no return. Through this door, they left behind the known for the unknown. They left behind security for security. We're going to go through this door. You want to go? And then you walk through, not the passage you came in, but then through another passage through the door of no return, and then onto a ship, away from your family. And then who knows what happened to you after that. Right onto the ship. In 1998, two bodies of ex-slaves were exhumed in America and Jamaica. They were brought back through this door to reverse the trend of no return. So that I was thinking the area wow. not hold it anymore. I wake up every day, my life is like a dream. Every day, I feel like I'm dreaming. I have such a wonderful life. I am so blessed and so fortunate. I want all those people who think that they can't survive and all those people who say, well, I can't do this, I can't do that. I want to show people that that isn't true. You can do whatever you want. So on behalf of the government and people of this country, it's my pleasure to welcome you back. Who do I think I am? I know that I'm a survivor, and I came from a group of people who are survivors. Why wouldn't I want to do the best that I could to honor those people? Wow, that was a really good video. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it, it, it tough, very, very tough ending right there. Um, very emotional. Um, I think it was perfect that Don Lemon got to take his mom with him. Um, in terms of the genealogy, it was really interesting. Would have been cool for them to go a little bit further into the um, Henry Rivole. Rival, I forgot exactly how to pronounce the last name. But um, would have been cool if they'd gone into that a little bit. Um, into the connection and, you know, I mean, living in, in that area of the country and having parents, one that's white and one that's black. And yeah, I don't know. That's, that was very, very interesting. Um, wasn't, wasn't really expecting the DNA stuff to, to come in, but then when they started to kind of hint towards it, I was like, I wonder if they're going to do it. So that was kind of cool to see they did include that a little bit. Um, but this is 2014, so I'm sure those results have changed since then. That was really interesting what was said about the uh, slave, uh, the, the remains of slaves, who, which were then brought back to go through the door of no return. Um, that's, it was really interesting. I'd never heard that before. Um, but that's a really very uh, interesting thing to do, but very symbolic, too. And it was very uh, symbolic that, you know, in this video, they show them going back through the door of no return and closing it um, before the before the end of the episode. So that, that was that was just really cool. The, the whole episode, I really liked it. I'm going to have to look in and see if uh, there were any other CNN videos done like this, because now I've seen Kamau Bell. I've seen John Berman. Now I've seen Don Lemon. 
And they, they had to have done more than just those three. So we'll have to look into that. Thank you so much for checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. You can also click right about here if you'd like to subscribe. It's completely free to do so. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Genie Vlogger. I'm the Genie Vlogger. See you in my next video.